Hello friends, welcome to CTT Cloud Stack Talk. Here we discuss and learn about cloud offerings from different vendors and as well as do hands-on with all the cloud related technologies. Today we'll learn about how we can containerize a Spring application. So what are the prerequisites for this hands-on? I expect a little bit of knowledge and familiarity about, about Java, Docker, Dockerfile, and from software standpoint, uh, you should be familiar with HTS Spring Tool Suite and Marvin also to build the Spring application. And of course, you need to be aware of Docker commands. I will show you all the basic Docker commands so you, you can be familiar with it. You can start exploring it. However, for this hands-on, you don't need to know explicitly Java, Spring Boot, etc. Just for this demonstration, I have already created a Spring Boot application using Java and we can use that. So what are the different activities for this hands-on? First, we should create a Spring application that I have already done it. I will not show how to create the Spring application in this demo. There is another video, you can explore it and, and you can learn about how we can create a Spring application as well. Then uh, we will test the application whether it is working fine in our local system. We will run it and test it uh, just to uh, see the response the outcome of the application. And then we will create a Docker file. We will write the Docker file and, and the, the main objective of having a Docker file is to create the corresponding Docker image. right? So then uh, naturally after creating the Docker file, we will build the container image uh, from the Docker file. And then we will try to create and run a Docker container using that image. And then of course we will test it whether everything is uh, working or not. So that is the overall scope of this hands-on session. Okay, so let's begin. I have created a folder and keep the application that I created using Spring Boot. Now you can see there is nothing else uh, except this jar file. So let's move to the PowerShell. So I am using PowerShell. So let me show you uh, how to run this Spring application first. Then we'll test it. So this is a Java application, right? So we will use Java command, Java jar, and the, then the jar name. So that's it. So let's hit the enter button. It's running, right? So you can see the Spring logo. It's coming up. Yep, it's up, right? So let's move to the browser. Here it is. So this is the URL that the Spring App application, the Tomcat server is exposing endpoint. And then this is the, the API endpoint. So after forming this URL, let's hit it. Here it is. So you're getting response, right? So that means the application is running. So let's move to the PowerShell again and stop it by pressing Control C. So it stop. So if I now try to recall the API again, it is not executing, right? So it will eventually time out. Yes, here it is. So let's go back to the PowerShell again. Let's clear the screen. Let me show you uh, whether anything is running or not, any Docker container. So just to show that Docker PS, there is nothing running right at this point. So I, uh, I will also show you what are the available images right now with, with the system. So these are the available images and there is there is no spring related application you can see. So we'll create one and then uh, we'll see the corresponding image as well. Now there is nothing else in this jar. So let's, uh, so if you can remember uh, the activities that we are going to perform. First, we have to create a Docker file. So let's create a Docker file. Now I can save it as Docker file. Okay, now it's saved. Now let's try to uh, write this Docker file. So first, we have what we have to do? We have to write a from keyword. That means this container image is going to be built upon a pre-existing container image. 
which is definitely uh, for our case is Java because we are going to use Java underline. So, and we also use OpenJDK. So you can use OpenJDK and then the tag name. So for this case, we'll be using Java 8, JDK 8 and from Alpine group. So this is the uh, first basic uh, from command line that you have to incorporate in the Docker file. So it will fetch the corresponding Java container image from the Docker Hub registry. I believe when you are doing it first time, you will not have the, the, the Java container image on your local system. The first time it will fetch the image from the Docker Hub registry. And then onwards, the build time of this Docker file will be very minimum, a couple of seconds because it will skip the download uh, part, right? The next line is definitely you have to add the jar file. The jar file we are referring as this this one, right? So just copy this and paste it, okay? So this is the jar file. So add this jar file from local to, let's say you can even rename it when, uh, let's say for example, right, jar for simplicity, app.jar, right? And then we need a entry point. Entry point is basically is used for executable container. Now, for this case, we are going to, whenever you will run the Docker, it will it should automatically execute this application. So it is kind of a default entry point of this, uh, of this application, right? So entry point is a default uh, door to a particular command. So for our case, we can write Java minus jar and then app.jar. So that's all guys, uh, everything should be there in this Docker file accordingly. So first we will build the, first we will download the open JDK from the Docker hub. Then we will add the jar file from our local system to this container image. And then we are creating an entry point to run the Spring Boot application. That's simple. So let's save it and close it. So we have created the Docker file and next step is to build the Docker file. So let's do this. Docker then build. Now here by default uh, the docker architecture reads the, the file docker file from the current directory. However, if you want to keep the docker file in some other directory, then you can use minus F and then path, path of, the, uh, of the docker file. So for our case, it is uh, already here. So we, we can skip this argument. And we can, what we can do, we can tag it. Tag it means provide a name for this image. So let's uh, call it Spring App. And then the current directory, right? Let's hit the enter button. It's building the image. Basically, I already have the OpenJDK downloaded from the Docker Hub registry. So that's why it didn't take much time. It has built the image in, within a few seconds, as you can see. Okay, so we have successfully built uh, the image. So let's find out what has been built using docker images command. As you can see, the spring app image has been created. So earlier it was not there, now it is there, right? And now and the next step is how to create and run the container. So let's clear the screen first and then we'll do it. So I can show you current container list there is no container, right? So let's try to build and uh, run container from this from that particular image. The Docker run. Now for the Spring App application by default, it uses Tomcat and the port 8080. So when we run the Spring App, as we have seen that in our uh, test application mode, it was running using the 8080 port. So we have to map the Docker container port with the host system. So the application port is 8080. Now we have to map with host port. So we can use the same port or you can use a different port as well of your local system, which is available. However, for this case, just for simplicity, I am using 8080, the same port. The command is then docker run minus p 8080 colon 8080. Then let's uh, provide a name to that container application, Spring App 
container let's call it and then from which image spring app right as you can recall so let's hit okay here you go so it's coming up so let's wait for a couple of seconds okay let started right so let's move to the browser again to test the application here right localhost and then team here we have the response right that means the application containerized spring application is running now let's go back to the powershell again let's stop it by pressing control c however it will not stop the container uh, when we are directly running it using the java command from the local system after pressing control c it got stopped right however if we check the, the running container status you can see the 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 container id image spring app and the name spring container status is running up about a minute so that means the control c doesn't stop the container so let if you want to stop the container you have to write the command docker stop and then either container id or container name let's use container name so it will return the container name itself uh, when it successfully stop the container so it should be bring app cnt here there it is okay let's try to refresh this one so it will eventually time out that's it there it is so now we have uh, so we have created the container and ran it using minus p command right here you can see so that we are binding the port and if you use this command you you will get the command output as we have seen here right suppose you don't want to see any console output you want to run this container in by background so what what you will do so we have to use uh, different parameters when while creating or running the container itself so let's do that okay but before going to that i have to remove the container just to trigger the create run command again so let me remove the earlier command okay it's removed now let's clear the screen now try to create and run the container once again however this time i will use minus d flag that means it will run in background so we'll use the same port just to map between container port and the host port now again using a name let's say spring app p and here and then the image name right let's hit the enter here you go the container is already running so let's check the status Docker PS is running right just 11 seconds ago the container got started so let's go back to the browser and test the application again so let's refresh this URL once again here you go we have the response again so that means that means we have working containerized being that's it guys we're done for today so we'll see in your next CTD video Please subscribe and support this channel. I will really appreciate that. And do comment below so I can enhance the upcoming videos accordingly. Thank you guys.